Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. And uh, <clears throat> that's the greetings of, uh, of, of peace upon the, the audience that review in this tape. Um, my name is uh, Ali Abdul Karim Hanshi. I am the head instructor of the Star Crescent School of Central Knowledge, the Kogoro system of, of ninjutsu. Uh, and I come from the way of the wind. And my in, in, instructor is uh, late. Oh, Sensei Ronald Duncan. And um, my school element is the way of the war wind and water. Uh, I have today one of my students, one of my uh, novice students, he's a yellow belt. And um, the reason why we're doing this interview is because he had an experience, he had an experience that I would like him to share uh, to the audience and other students and other, and other martial artists and non-martial artists. Uh, the reason for it is because uh, a lot of times we get people who are what I consider detractors, who, who are critics of other systems. They may be martial artists, they may be non-martial artists, and they, ho they have a whole lot to say about uh, fighting, combat. And the things that, I, the things that disturbs me is, is the presumption and the assumption and the speculation and the conjecture on how a fight may turn out. No one is able to predict, let me repeat that, no one is able to predict how a fight is going to uh, basically complete or the outcome of any combat. No one. And no one knows how an attack is going to be executed by an opponent or an assailant. The thing is, is that you train, you train, you train your mind, you train your body, and you train your heart and your spirit to basically receive any type of attack. In this school, we deal with all aspects of attack. Ninjutsu, the Shobunobi system, deals with all levels of attack. Physically, mentally, spiritually, psychologically, the whole gamut of of what it takes to defend yourself. So the reason why I have the reason why I have um, my student here, I want to allow him to share with you the experience that he has re uh, had when he got into a situation. Okay. Sound like my brother. Okay. I want you to share to the audience um, exactly what occurred during that time. And you know, be specific, and and then what was your response to the attack that was that that was uh, committed against you? I was out at a party in North Carolina with my relatives, cousin was tipsy, drunk. I just um. Well, yeah. don't be too detailed. Oh, all right, all right. Just go into. Right. The, you know, I was at a party. <laughs> One of my cousins had a situation over a female. The boyfriend got mad. My cousin was drunk. I'm trying to um um have the situation. Um, diffuse. So the boyfriend got mad. I threw my hands up. Like we learned in class, you got to become an actor out here. So I got my hands up. The boyfriend come with the knife out of nowhere, tried to hit me. I blocked it, took him down. His man came. I did another move, hit him. Everybody in the club, like, wow. But not going into details, it's about the training. The harder you train in here, the easier it's on the street. People don't realize by training, knife techniques, um, Ham bones, Joe's, it's baseball bats in the streets, it's bottles in the streets, it's garbage cans. You will have to move fast. The speed is everything, force, acceleration, impact. You have to do all, all your techniques in school will come in handy. But, but when the dude came with the knife, the technique just came out of my mind with a smile, and he went down so easy, it, it makes you go into a zone of martial arts. Not, it don't take you out of, out of your mindset of fighting street no more. Now you're in a martial arts set. Cause you've been training for this moment in class so hard you never get to use it. But now when you get to use it, when you take somebody down, you don't really want to hurt them because you can go to jail. Mine's went a little deeper because his friend came with a bottle after I took the knife and I did something else that jeopardized my freedom, but the camera saved me because I didn't have a knife in my hand in the beginning. They had the knife. But the whole thing is you have to train. Training ain't easy. You, you at home, sit down, watch TV, play with your weapons. You got to train, 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 train. I can't emphasize this more. When I first came here, I was like this, tight. And the professor was always saying, man, you got to loosen up. 
you gotta loosen up. You're gonna hurt yourself. But as time trained with the younger, the younger students helped me a lot. The older students helped me a lot. The black belts helped me a lot. I became loose. Now I'm flexible. I can move like water. I can move like wind. And I got more speed. I'm 230 pounds, but I can move fast. But in knife techniques, you gotta move quick. You gotta take them down hard. That we don't get um you get killed. You can't get killed in these situations. You want to be the one to walk away. You don't want your family to come carrying you with six people carrying you out. Let the other person go. But you gotta become an actor. You gotta throw your hands up in the air. That's when people see this is fear. All the martial arts students out there looking at this, this is fear. But by doing this, you size them up. You know what you're gonna do, and go at them real hard. Now, some of the questions I want to ask you. In the moment that th these postures that that you executed and, and, and that you performed during that time. Are those postures that you've been taught? I've been taught that by you. Right. Become an actor. Mm -hmm. And the, the, the very fact that I, that you were told, you always told to um, uh, put your hands up, that's, you don't have to take a, nah, a this, put up a guard. That nah, is a this, guard. This is, this is right? a guard. And this that allows you, passive. when the attack is made, easy access. You got this is passive and right. quarter law. This is fear, right. but this is a block and a right. strike. Right. You gotta become an actor. So then, the, the psychological aspect of, of your training, this is psychological. Like I don't want to fight, yeah. and so forth. That came into play. The other, the other thing, how how was your your mindset? My mind, my mindset was like war, heart racing. Was you was you was you com, you know like calm and and collective? And in, in other words, you know you wasn't you, okay. Quite naturally, you feared, but did you control that fear? Yes. Right. I and control you, that. Once I got my hands up, I smile. Because right. everybody who trained me in class, you know, I, I, I'm going to smile. Right. But once I sized up and seen he was standing 50 50, he didn't have no momentum to come at you with power. Everything vanished his mind. Right. He just came off a, a quick right. thing. Now he came, and because and, and afterwards we're going to have you demonstrate, demonstrate, you know, exactly what happened in, in the attack and, and, and what was your response to the attack. At the same time, uh, people like to say um, that, oh, they're not going to attack like that, or they'll tell you that, oh, you know, or they'll say, they'll say, you know, some people, they criticize, and they and they make criticisms about our movements, how we, you know, our Thai sabat, we do too much movement, or we you know, we spin, or whatever the case is. Did you spin during that moment? Yes. You got Thai sabat, Thai con. Right, when the man, move. Tell, tell them how you spin, when, what, when from, the, from when what? somebody coming at you real quick, your whole thing is right. getting around them. Right. Now, when you, that spin was against what attack? Knife. Or knife Stab. attack. Right. And then people say, oh, if you turn your back. But you, you, it wasn't that you turned your back. It was, a, it, it was what, a quick? Quick reflex. As you've been told. move. As you've been told. doing that move over and over and right. over and over. Now, uh, you said that when you had disarmed him. What area did you strike that you've been taught to strike? Here. Right. And you struck that area yeah. with the man with the knife, and then you what? Uh, he came with the knife, came here, locked, came over, strike, right. broke, broke him down as he's going down. Came right. Back. This right. way, took the knife, right. that's when his partner was coming with the right. bottle. Right. That was my mistake. Right. That was got me arrested. Right. Okay. Not taking that. You don't have to admit to anything. Uh, <laughs> we don't want to incriminate you. You're out. You know, but the point is, is that um, uh, you turned the tables against that. Those are people. Whatever negative they came with was turned. To, you you brought a positive image of protecting yourself. You turned to the get. They got the worst of it, which they should have. You know, but you don't have to go into details. But they got the worst of it. Whatever they were coming to harm you with, they got harmed with their yeah. own action. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So 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 the point the point we're making here. Is that you detractors out there that are always criticizing, you know, especially the way the wind system, you know, this this is a testimony, this is proof of of how my students train, and this is this is a credit first to our Lord, Allah, and then to the to the to the ones whom He's given knowledge to, like my sensei, O, o sensei, or the late O sensei Ronald Duncan, who taught us. To that extreme, he taught us the truth. He taught us the truth of combat, and what to expect, and how to and how to encounter and engage uh, attacks. As my student, now he's not the only student of mine that have experienced situations. I have students that that have, um, and he had a multiple attacks. Most of my students 
that come came to me about and testified to me about uh, their experience in fighting is multiple attacks. And he was able to ward off a deadly attack with a knife and a bottle. And he did exactly what we taught him to do. He executed without, without moment's hesitation. He didn't hesitate. And the spinning, you don't understand. If you don't understand the Thai sabak that, that we utilize, then don't criticize it because you don't experience it. You know, we're not teaching, I'm not teaching, or my teacher didn't teach us to get hurt. No one teaches you to lose. No, no martial art system teaches you to lose. So understand, because you don't understand something, doesn't mean that it doesn't work because you, because you haven't been, you haven't experienced or you haven't been involved in what we do. So he's a testimony. I like to always bring students like this to let you know firsthand. So later on, he's going to show us exactly the techniques that he uh, executed in, the, in, in that situation. But I just wanted to bring this to you humbly, not as not arrogant, humbly, so people can be people can understand. It's about training. We see too many people get out, get out there and get hurt, and not know what to do, and 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 some 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 situations are fatal. Some are, some are serious, and we we all we're doing here is trying to um, trying to teach the students how to protect themselves, and so forth. So thank you for, for listening, and our, our next segment with, with, um, with my uh, be, uh, uh, yellow belt, uh, Samson Sanders, will, will be where he will execute the exact techniques that he used against the attack. Thank you. Thank you.